Hey, Nick Dingle here again. Welcome to part two, everybody, of Norton Crosses. Let's start doing some scripting. I'm just going to give you a heads up right now. I use Visual Studio 2015. If you don't use Visual Studio, hopefully you've installed MonoDevelop alongside Unity. If you have, you should be right to go. So first thing, let's do a clickable square script because this is a really easy one. So double click on him, open him up. Visual Studio is going to open for me. If you don't have it, it'll just open MonoDevelop, hopefully. And we're ready to go. Now, there's a couple of things we're going to do in this script. First thing is we need to associate each square with a number, okay? And I want you to pay attention to these numbers when I talk about it right now because we're going to be referring to these squares by their number for the rest of this tutorial. So this square in the top left is number zero. This guy's number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I know the numbers don't match up over here, but that's not important, okay? If you want to, you can go and rename each of these squares so they've got the proper number on the end. But to be completely honest with you, I'm going to ignore the names here on the left, okay? And we're going to associate the numbers in a different way. What we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a variable. So I want to put a few extra lines here on line five. So I'm going to press enter a couple of times. I'm going to go public int where number with a capital N equals zero semicolon on the end. And if I save this, I'm, you can either click this little save button here or you can hit control S, which I'm going to do every single time I save. Come back, you'll see Unity thinks a little bit. And now we've got this little thing here, square number, which matches up exactly how we created this. And it equals zero, and you'll see it put zero in the box straight away. You'll also notice that every single clickable square has now got this property. Okay, and that's because they're prefabs and they all share the same behavior. Okay, what this actually does, this line, we've made a public variable, which means it's accessible anywhere throughout our entire game. It's an int that stands for integer, which is a whole number. And then we give it a name, which is square number. And Unity is nice enough to capitalize the S and put a space between the two words. Okay, because Unity is smart enough to recognize that. And the equals zero is just to put an initial value inside of it. Okay, I want to delete all this code from line eight to line 16. Gone. And we're going to put in our own function. Okay, we're going to go void on mouse down please pay attention to the capital o m and d if you don't it won't work properly open and close some braces and then squiggly braces come in so shift open a squiggly brace and in unity oh sorry um visual studio if you hit enter here it organizes all those lines for you that's okay, nice and simple so there's two things we're going to do here this little function here fires off every time we click on an object that has this script so that means every time we click on one of these squares, the code here from line 10 is going to execute. Two things we're going to do. First of all, we're going to tell the game manager which square just got clicked on and let the game manager handle everything else that comes after that. Then we're going to destroy this script. so We can't accidentally click on the square again. This is actually quite easy. The first thing we're going to do is find the game manager object. So the way we do that is go game object, capital G, capital O dot find okay this is looking for the object and in brackets we have to put some quotes and in the quotes we put the name of the object we're looking for which is game manager with a game now what are we actually doing once we've found the game manager well we're going to send them a message so dot send message space so it'll finish typing for me what message are we going to send him we're going to tell him we just got clicked on so in brackets we're going to call what's called the square clicked function. Now, we haven't actually made this yet inside of our script, but this is going to be what we call it later on. And we're actually going to send it an object. Now, what I mean by that is when square clicked gets called, when we ask it to do something, we're going to send it a value. And this is going to sound a little bit weird, but the value we send it is game object with a little g. Okay. Once you've done that, put a semicolon on the end of your line and you're done. I'm just going to unpin these so you can see the whole line. So first of all, we find the game manager. We send him a message which is square clicked. And then we send him game object. What that actually is, is we're sending him the thing that was clicked on. So for example, if we click on this square here, we send the game manager the whole square. Okay. That's a good thing, okay? Because it means we can then spawn objects on top of him. We can destroy the script and all this sort of other stuff that comes along with it. Second stage, destroy the script is actually really easy. Just type in destroy, open a bracket, type in this. 
This is a special keyword which refers to, you can see I'd highlighted that, it refers to the clickable square script. So what it's going to do is destroy the script, not the whole game object. It's quite nice. But that's it for this script. Now we need to start setting up our settings for our script, which are actually very simple. You'll see we haven't numbered our squares yet. That's still number zero. This one here should be set to number one. This is square number two and so forth. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, with that done, that's the clickable squares 100% complete and we're ready to move on to our game manager. Okay, so moving into our game manager script, there's a lot of things we're gonna do here and we're gonna take it just step by step and I'm gonna split this into two videos, starting with this one, obviously. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of all these lines again from six to 14, okay? Because we just don't need them. The first thing I really wanna do is implement the message that we tried to send from the clickable square. Because what I wanna do is test how it works, okay? So if we quickly come over here, we're gonna to need to make a public void square click. So you'll notice, sorry, click to, I need to put an ED on the end of it. Okay, open and close some brackets and put some squigglies. So this is the way that we structure a send message. So send message with square clicked has to match up with public void and then the name that you're trying to send a message to. Now we also have sent a game object. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to put a little variable inside here to capture that sent game object. With a capital G, game object, and I'm just gonna call it square. Okay, now before we do any complicated programming here, what I'm gonna do, I just wanna print on the screen, okay, the word hello. So if you type in print, bracket, quotes, hello, with a semicolon on the end, jump back to Unity, what's gonna happen is it's gonna come up in the console. Right? If I press play and click on one of these squares, it should say hello from our game manager script. Ah! Not good. I've got my game manager script. Oh, did I not save the changes? That might be the issue. <laughs> Try that again. There we go. I just didn't click save. That's all. All right. So you can see we're sending a message. The square clicked. And then when we come down here, we're printing the word hello. So you can see that our code is talking to each other. And that's the important bit at the moment. The next thing I want to know is, can we get the number of the square that clicked on us? So remembering... I want this square number value here and I want to get it right here. Okay, so I'm going to put in a little comment. Get the square number. Okay. And okay, that's fine. Get the square number. We don't need to do anything else. So I need another int. I'm going to call it square number again. Unfortunately, it doesn't automatically get the number. So it's going to equal square dot get component in the bracket or in diamond brackets this time around clickable square on the other side of those brackets you do round ones dot square number so what i've actually done that's really complicated but i've grabbed the square that was sent to us i've then grabbed our clickable square script this bad boy here i grabbed the number that was at the top of the script right there and I'm putting inside my own number because I'm going to use it later on, okay? It just makes it nicer if I grab the number and put it inside this little variable here rather than having to write this every single time because that's really long, okay? What I'm going to do now is we're going to print that to the screen. So print square number like so. Let's try it out. So I'm not looking for hello anymore. I'm looking for zero, one, two to eight. Like so. So you can see it's printing out the square number I'm clicking on. I can click on only one of the squares once. Like so. And there we go. So with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to start setting up a few things. So the next thing I'd like to be able to do is spawn a naught or a cross on top of what they click on. Okay. But before we can do that, we need to know what actually is a naught and what is a cross. 
Okay, because it's in our prefabs folder, but this game manager has no idea what they are. So I'm going to make two more variables up here. Okay, and I'm going to call them public game object naught public game object cross. I'm going to put a little comment in again because I like comments, they make things nice. So let's say these are for the object prefabs. Now if I save, so I actually managed to remember this time, come back to our game. If I click on the game manager, you'll see we now have a spot to put the naught and the cross object in. Now, there's a couple of ways we can add those objects. The easiest is to go to your project, down to prefabs, and just drag them over. So the naught, bang, and cross, bang. Okay, and the reason we do that is we've now told the script what you are going to consider a naught and what you are going to consider a cross. And if we go to our script, let's actually make another little function down here called void spawn uh, prefab, like so. And this is where it's going to create one of those objects. So let's call on spawn prefab, just like so. Okay. I'm going to put another comment in create prefab for the click. All right, I think that looks nice. And then in the code for spawn prefab, we're going to use a function built into Unity called instantiate. And that just means to create an object. Okay. If I open brackets, it asks for at least three things uh, the original object, which is going to be a cross or a naught, position of that object, and its rotation. So let's just start with a naught. For the moment for position i'm just going to put it in the middle of the screen and the way i'm just going to give it vector 3.0 and that'll put it smack bang in the middle of the screen and i don't want the object rotated at all so what i do is i write quaternion dot identity and that means not rotated basically when i click on a square we're going to grab the square number and spawn the prefab and it's just going to do the naught for the moment and put it smack bang in the middle of our game doesn't matter where we click, by the way. Okay. Have a look at that. It made it. You can see it right there. But if I pause the game, you'll notice it's actually behind everything. The easiest way to solve that is I'm going to move these squares back. Okay. So if you guys want to do this with me, click on the top square, shift click the bottom square. For the Z number, type in minus one. Okay, where are my, oh, sorry, wrong way around, one. I'm going to type, not minus one, one. All right, now if I press play, click on, there's my naught. As I said, it doesn't matter where I click, it's only going to put naught in at the moment. Okay, so what we need to do is now institute a turn system where it's first of all a naught's turn. When they click one of those squares, it swaps to the cross's turn and then back afterwards. Okay. What I need to do, I need to make another variable up the top, guys. Okay, and I'm going to call it int turn equals one. What I'm going to do for this variable, turn tells us turn it is. And the way I'm going to work it is one is going to equal naught and two is going to equal cross. Right? So what I'm going to do with this first of all, okay, is I'm going to add a new function, guys, before we attack spawn prefab void next turn like so and what we do for that is you increase so i'm going to go from one i'm going to increase that to two so it's the crosses turn and then i'm going to increase that again to three however if it gets to three i'm now going to swap back to one and it's actually a really good way to do turn systems so increase turn we do that by going turn plus equals one which means add one to turn and now we check if turn hit three. And the way we do that, if statement, if turn double equals three, and we go turn equals one. So what that means is we're going to increase the number of turn two, and then we'll move on. Okay. And the next time we hit next turn, it'll increase to three. And if it's three, we go back to the start at one. Okay. And I'm going to call that just after we spawn prefab. So next turn, like so. Okay, so we're spawning a prefab and then we're going to the next turn. Now, why the hell did I do all that hard work? The reason I did that 
is because now in spawn prefab, I can check whose turn it is. Is it naught or is it cross? And I can instantiate the correct one. So if turn equals one, okay, instantiate a naught. Else if turn equals two, instantiate, I'm just going to, no, I won't. I'll do the whole thing. Cross at vector three, zero, Waternian identity. Okay. So check whose turn it is on their uh, prefab, I'll call it. All right, that's a lot of coding, guys. So if you need to pause the video before I go and test it, just make sure you do. Okay, pause the video now, write up your code, and come and test it with me. Let's press play. It should start with a naught. I'm going to press it again. We should get across, and it's going to go back to naught, then cross, then naught, then cross and so forth. Now, this is the biggest problem at the moment. It's not going in the right place. What we actually have to do is edit our spawn prefab so that we can tell where to spawn the prefab, what actual position. Vector three zero is all well and good. We actually want to put it on top of the square that clicked on it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put another variable up in here and it's going to be vector three and I'm going to call it position, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of vector three zero and copy over position. Okay. You might be asking, what is the value of position at the moment? Well, we have none at the moment. Okay. Up here, we've got an error because it's asking us to give a value to position. All right. And then we have to ask the next question, where is the position coming from? Well, it's coming from the square that got clicked on. Okay. So right here in the brackets, asking for position. So I'm going to go square three square what I say three square dot transform dot position and that's how we get the position of the square that was clicked on it's now going to come down here and it's going to use the position of the square to spawn our prefab okay and you're going to see one more problem that we need to deal with unfortunately again it's spawning behind the square what I'm going to do go back to 2d sorry Right here, we need to change the position Z back to zero. Hope that makes sense, okay? Because it was pushing our prefab back with the square, we don't want to do that. We want to pull it forward. So we'll set the Z back to zero. Play. Now, we have what looks like a game. Okay. So for the moment, guys, I'm going to call that it for this video. We've got a lot more to do. We need to check who's won the game. We need to remember whose turn it was. Oh, sorry, who went in what square, things like that. But for the moment, that's part two done, guys. Thank you very much for watching. In the next video, we'll finish it up. If you want to like, comment, subscribe, please do it down below. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching.